Okay guys, it's Fashion Files and today we are tackling a subject we've had a load of requests about and it's a really hard one to cover which is men's accessories. So have a look on the kitchen table here and you're going to see a shitload of different accessories. We're going to go through them and we're going to tell you which are good and which are bad and which are the simplest to replicate. Alright, what I'm going to say first of all is avoid buying accessories from obvious high street shops like Top Man or River Island. You can find some good stuff there, but it's all mass produced. And accessories aren't like normal garments, you know. They're really obvious, and if you're in a bar and the bloke next to you has got exactly the same chain on as you, with exactly the same medallion on, it's just going to look stupid. Everyone knows you went and got it from Top Man for six or seven quid. It's not a statement of your own individuality. And it just looks a bit lame, right? So yeah, we're going to show you some examples of good ones in places like Top Man, but in general, you're best to try and find your own things from sort of market stalls, vintage shops, or even make your own accessories, which is what I'm going to show you how to do right now. And that is the best way because that guarantees no one else is going to have it. It's got a little bit of a story behind it. It's going to look really cool, a bit vintage, a bit rock and roll, and it's going to be your own creation. So how do I create my own accessory? I hear you cry. All right, it's quite simple. First, you've got to find a chain, any chain. It can be just a simple dog tag chain like that. All right, I'm sure you guys know this kind of style with this little clip thing here. This one, a bit too small, right? But I thought I'd show you it because that's the most common and most easily available thing. And a lot of you might have one of these anyway at home, which you just pull off something else and create your own cool accessory. All right, so that's an example of the kind of chain, or even better, we could use a chain like this. So this is just some old, rust, almost rusted, discolored silver chain, I think, which a friend of mine got from a tourist shop on London's Oxford Street. It was cheap, it was faux silver when he bought it, it's now faded. The faded element is actually cool because the accessories we're going to create are going to look a bit rock and roll, a bit vintagey, and they're not trying to pretend they're real silver. This is not about money or wealth or investment. This is purely about having something cool which looks cool and which looks a bit vintage, a bit you know rock and roll, a bit individual, something you might have had for a while. So it could be that kind of chain. It could be this kind of chain. Right? These are just two ones we haven't messed around with, just two examples of link chains. Now, what will we do with these? Okay, so let's have a look at a few of the ones which I created earlier, Blue Peter style. Okay, so first things first, actually gents, I'm wearing this rather loud cowboy shirt today. Never wear your accessory like this. Just like, you know, collars aren't meant for necklaces. If you're going to wear a collar, then you keep your chain inside. As such. Yeah, you can't see it. Oh well, tough shit. You're not meant to be able to see it. Okay, so collar, chain inside, but if you want to have your shirt open or you're wearing a t-shirt, that's how we want the accessory to look. It really goes well with t-shirts or an open shirt. It doesn't work with a collar. So we've got another example of a random chain we have. This one, God knows where it came from. It wasn't originally a piece of jewellery. We just made it into one. And so the first thing I created was, I found this mini crown. This crown was actually attached to the side of one of my mum's handbags. Not anymore, because I nicked it and pulled it off and put it on this chain. So here we are, that's my first accessory I created. I found this crown on the side of a woman's handbag. It's got a little crown, old looking, faded, you know, discoloured metal chain with a crown on. Cool. Secondly, I have this old chain here. Again, you can see the metal is faded and discoloured. This was actually pulled off the chain which connects a pen to the pen holder in a bank, I think. That's how my mate got it. And he used to wear this around his neck and put his own trinkets on. Today, I've put on this old faded ring. This ring was once upon a time fake silver, but I wore it on holiday, it all faded off, and now it's kind of bronze and cool. I'd actually like it much more like that, and it goes with the old faded chain, 
Remember what I said, we're not trying to pretend this is real silver. It's meant to look vintage, it's meant to look old, it's meant to be cool rather than showing that you've got loads of money to spend on jewellery. So we've got this old ring, which is just on there, loose. And then I have this little mini wooden cross. It's a really rough cross made out of wood. I mean, if you're a handyman, you can always make, make this yourself at home. Pour some varnish on it, bang, it would look exactly like this, yeah? God knows where this came from. But I put that on and the old ring. Sweet, that's really cool. Furthermore, what else have I made? We have this one here. So another variation of old faded metal. Again, I think this was originally from a high street shop like River Island or Top Man. It wasn't mine. I think one of my mates wore it loads and it's faded and got old looking. And then on the bottom of that, I simply pulled off bits of another key ring, I think, or chain, and made all these different sort of branches coming out of the bottom of the chain. So you see all these things. And then to these, I attached different trinkets. So the first one was this mini silver cross. All right, that was originally off a men's bracelet. Pulled it off the bracelet, put it on there. Then we've got this little shotgun, which I love. I don't have a clue where that came from, all right, but it looks cool. That got whacked on there as well. And then finally, we had this kind of shark's jaw, which was off a key ring, I think, which my friend got at some kind of shark theme park or something in America, but it looks really cool. And again, it's old faded metal, and there we have it. So nobody in the world is gonna have this. It's all bits and bobs, stuff you can find easily with an old ass chain. Bang, there we go. And then finally, my most recent creation. This is one I actually made this week. Okay, we have this one here, all right, which is on the wrong way around. If you zoom, zoom in on that, I love this one, right? So, this is another old chain, right? Actually, this was a women's chain, which had a kind of red heart on and some feathers and stuff. Obviously not cool for a bloke. Simply, I pulled that off. Once upon a time, it belonged to my sister. I pulled off the women's trinkets, medallions, whatever you want to call, and added my own sort of, my own trinkets, for want of a better word, medallions, whatever. So, if you can't find old chains, like I've been mentioning this one, this one, any of these, if you, if you don't have that in your house and you're like, where am I gonna get a chain? Well, you can always go into like a high street shop and buy a bit of women's jewelry. It doesn't matter what the link is like. It doesn't have to be real silver. All you want is it coming down to your mid chest, really? Is it coming down over your T-shirt? When you're having these sort of medallion chains, you don't want it too high. Yeah, you don't want it up here. You want it right down here. It's kind of a bling. You wear it over a T-shirt, as I said earlier, and that looks cool. So anyway, how did I make this one? Well, we've got the first cross underneath here. It's see-through, and that was originally a woman's earring. So that would have been here. I simply pulled it off the thing, kept the loop, and put it on there. And then on top of that, if you zoom in again, I put this mini cross. So it's a cross on top of a cross. And the mini cross there, I found on another earring, a men's earring this time similar to the one I'm wearing, a little cross like that, combine them both, and there we have it. I really love that, I think it looks super cool, and nobody, again, is gonna have this. It's gonna to be totally my own creation, you're never gonna see it again, bang. It's cool, it's my style, and if anyone asks me where I got it, I'll simply tell them I made it, which is pretty cool as well. So that, gents, is what I mean by making your own accessories. You find little bits and bobs, and you whack them on there, right? Keep your eyes peeled, you can put on a sword, a shotgun, a shark's jaw, a cross, a ring, you know, a mini, anything. Little trinkets, stuff you think is cool, something relevant to your whole, your lifestyle, something a bit rock and roll, old looking, and there we have it. Crosses are the most easy. So that's how we would make our own accessory anyway. Now, moving on. We've got a few examples of other styles I like. That's my favourite. Old faded chain, little medallion, something going on on top. Yeah, hanging off I mean. We next have the kind of classic silver linked men's chain. 
Alright. These are actually very fashionable at the moment. And Top Man, River Island, all of the high street shops are producing a shitload of these men's classic link chains. This one is from Top Man. It retails at eight quid. Okay. I just said don't get accessories from Top Man. And I stick by that. However, if you like this style, you can't really tell this is from Top Man. You know? It's fake silver, it looks like real silver, as long as it doesn't fade, it is simply a men's chaps chain. Right, be careful with these because you don't want to look like a hard bastard. This has kind of been the reserve of the chav for many years. So if you know how to pull this off and your fashion works with it, then you can go for a link chain like this. But I would always say actually the easiest style were the medallions on the faded longer chain we looked at earlier. But just to show you what's in and what's around, these are pretty cool as well. But be aware, you must combine them with the right styles. Another example of that is this black version, which was from River Island. And this is actually a year or so old, right? And I've even broken the clasp, right? But just to show you the style, it started to fade, which I like as well. Again, this isn't trying to be real silver. It doesn't matter if it fades, it looks pretty cool. It's quite individual and shows it's a bit old and vintagey looking. So that's the black version and the silver version of the classic Link men's chain. They're pretty cool, they're in. Available at every high street shop around. Then we're going to move on again to beads. All right, beads are quite popular at the moment, yeah? The first thing with beads is we do not want beads like this. In fact, we don't want anything too tight to the neck for a man. You know, it looks feminine, it looks like a choker, and one of my absolute pet hates is kind of surfery jewellery. You know, like beads really close to the neck, like you might see kind of Aussie dude in London. They just look cheap and crappy and like you've picked them up when you're traveling in Thailand and no one cares you're traveling in Thailand. So I much prefer them, boom, when they come down a little bit. These are just plain brown beads which actually have mini skulls carved into them. I found these in China. Obviously, again, they're individual. No one's going to see this. They're from China. You're not going to see anybody hanging around the bars of London, wherever you, your locality may be, with a, a bead necklace like this. So try and find something a bit different and go for it again, dangling down to your mid-chest. Again, another variation on beads. We've got these black beads in a kind of matte stone. Pretty cool again. I like them. A bit different. Keep the colours low-key. We don't want loads of beads of different colours. It looks tacky, it looks childish, juvenile. Alright, so these are man's beads. Man beads. Alright, again, coming down to the mid-chest, sort of below your pecs. And finally, we've got this much more funky version in the black and white. And this I got in Camden Market in London. It's about three quid, super cheap. No one else is going to have it. It's from a market. And I really like that one as well. And that's going right down to my belly button. So it's a bit more show-offy as well. But I love the black and white combo. And this would look great with like a fitted t-shirt or something. Or, you know, the colours aren't perfect today, I've got this rather lavish in your face cowboy shirt on, but say I had sort of a plain fitted v-neck or a vest on with a more plain shirt in black and white, or simply just black or white, that's going to look awesome. So with beads, keep the colours low key, let them dangle quite far down, nothing too tight to the neck and nothing which looks too surfery. If you are actually a surfer and you're chilling out on Venice Beach or in Bondi Beach, you're doing your thing, you're surfing, cool, rock the surf jewellery. But once you're in cities like London, man, no one cares that you're a surfer, so quit the surf look. It makes you look like a student or a traveller, someone who's not really invested time and effort into their look, and that's not attractive for city slickers. Okay, so that's a, a city guy's cool beads. And also the length is a bit more hip-hoppy. It looks really cool like this. So that was beads. Then, what else do we have here? So we've got a lot of bad accessories. I'm going to come on to them in a minute. And the ones I've just shown you are all my own. So you're not going to find anything apart from this chain and this one in high street shops. They're all stuff I've picked up off my own back. And, you know, you're going to have to sort of replicate them or make your own, like I said at the start. However, we always try to give you direct stuff you can go and get from the high street. So we went and had a look in the obvious places to buy accessories, Top Man and River Island. And we found... Some not bad ones at all. Okay, so first we have this thing called Icon Brand, which is a different brand, but it's stocked in Top Man. 
It's definitely stocked in the bigger top man stores. I'm not sure if it's going to be in the smaller ones, but you can get these in, say, Oxford Street or either of the Westfields in London. And I'm sure throughout the country and abroad as well, you'll find them in the bigger top mans. So that's Icon Brand by Top Man. The first one we have here is 20 quid. And again, it's going along the same lines of the stuff I've made. So what do we have here? We've got a mini accordion. Alright, so a mini accordion, a little cross, a feather, a kind of silver medallion with a sort of logo, royal looking logo on it. It all looks a bit faded, a bit vintagey. That's the look they're going for. You know, the look they're going for is like rock and roll, dude. I've had this for years and these are things I've whacked on because they mean something to me. Doesn't mean anything to you, it's mass produced. But as mass produced accessories go, this does look individualistic. It does look something like this which we made ourselves so again if you wear this be aware that you might see loads of other guys wearing it but as accessories go it's pretty cool so top man icon brand 20 quid this one we also found this one in top man again my icon brand and this one i really like right this is probably my favorite one actually i like that one the leather but this i mean look at that it literally looks like the one i showed you just now with the crown, except this one has a mini skull. So if you can see the little skull, very rock and roll. Again, it's not even pretending to be real silver. The skull is all faded and you know vintagey looking. The chain isn't is you know just me metallic and obvious. Very similar to the crown one I showed you earlier. That was again icon brand available in Top Man. Seven quid, a mere seven quid. Furthermore. We found one last one in Top Man. This time it's actually by Top Man and not by Icon Brand. And this is just one of these classic sort of tooth medallion things. Not bad as well. Again, Top Man. And again, that retail at £7.50. So you get my ideas basically, guys, is that we want a metal chain. Yeah, the leather one works as well, but metal is going to be more obvious and easier to create. And then you're going to whack on some kind of a medallion, be it, what have we seen? Crosses, rings, a shotgun, a skull, a shark's jaw, an accordion, a cross, one of these weird tribal tooth things, a feather. Any little trinket you think looks cool, looks a bit vintagey, you can whack onto one of these kind of chains. Doesn't matter what the links look like, and it's going to create a cool individualistic accessory. So, that was Top Man's offering, and pretty good, not bad at all. Before we go on, we're going to quickly have a look at some bracelets, okay? We found these in River Island. So this one, again, we're going back to the Chaps chain link. This was from River Island. It was a mere six quid, and I really like that bracelet, actually. It's very cool. It's down there. And there's a black version as well. So there we have it. We've got the black version, which goes to the chain, and the silver version. They're not identical, but you see where I'm coming from. These bracelets are actually more versatile as well. You wear the chain and you're risking looking like a hard bastard, like, you know, a dude boozing down the pub, you know? You look like you might give someone a slap at any minute, right? These ones, not so much, yeah? They're not so prominent and they're not so sort of, you know, hard bastard looking, really. So the bracelets, you're less likely to sort of create the wrong impression than with the chains. So they're six quid and six quid, both from River Island. And I like them both. Okay. From there, we are now going to start looking at, oh no, sorry, we'll look at rings quickly first, right? So again, rings, right? Let's see what I've got on right here. Did I cut my nails? Yes, good. It's not about dirty nails on, on camera. So we've got a few variations of rings here. I have firstly, this cheapo thing I found in a market somewhere with an ace on it. Okay, I can't play cards, always lose a poker, but Ace is cool. Again, it's metallic, it's obviously not real silver, it's not trying to be anything, it's not. It's just cool, a bit rock and roll, I like that one. Then I've got a real silver ring. The slight pattern on it there, that's real silver, it was actually my dad's a long time ago, so that's cool. And then finally we've got another cheaper silver, but still real silver, sort of, ring with a pattern and that spins around. 
So again, you're not be able to replicate these rings exactly, but it's the whole vibe we're going for. Either real silver, or something which isn't trying to be real silver, which is just like, you know, beaten up and old and metallic. I've also got my friend's ring here, a bit more rock and roll. It's like a snake. Let's put that on one of my fingers. And I quite like that as well, it's a bit big for me. But there's a snake on that one, it's rock and roll. It's definitely not pretending to be real silver. There we go. I think he got that in the market somewhere as well. So these are the kind of rings I suggest. From the rings I suggest, now it's a good time to jump to bad accessories. And there is nothing worse than bad accessories, let me tell you that, yeah? If you're wearing shitty, obviously mass-produced crap jewellery from high street shops, for me it's like, wow, that dude's a loser. So be careful. If you're not sure, don't wear it at all. And my first and most obvious thing are these stainless steel rings. Ugh. These are by Topman and they cost 12 quid. Now that's the worst 12 quid you've ever spent in your life, right? They always have these kind of lame ass patterns on them. Look at that one, right? It's almost the same pattern as on my silver ring, except mine is carved into real silver. This is printed on or you know, etched in to this metallic ring with these awful stripes. It's, it, I mean, it, it's, it's obviously not real silver. It's stainless steel. It doesn't look rock and roll and vintagey like this. It looks new, it looks mass reduced, it looks high street. So really avoid these stainless steel rings, you know, especially the ones with these like rubbishy patterns on. See these guys wearing these all the time and they just suck majorly. So avoid them. Bad, bad rings. Secondly, the dreaded Shambhala. All right, this Shambhala is red and it's actually skulls, which is actually cooler than the average Shambhala. However, we're gonna flash a picture on screen right now of a typical Shambhala. Usually glittery, fake diamonds in them. You can tell it's a Shambhala by this mechanism here, All right? And at Fashion Game TV, we like to sort of comment on fashion which doesn't change that much. So we give the average guy an idea of what he can do at any time. Most of our videos are relevant for 10 years. However, these bracelets were super cool about two years ago, but they were so attractive to look at initially that everyone caught on, the high street caught on, they mass produced them and now they're just super tacky. Loads of people are wearing them and genuinely tacky people are wearing them. So avoid Shambhalas. Not quite as bad as Shambhalas, but this can also be said about a past favorite of mine, the Jesus Peace bracelet. Okay, it's like, you know, rosary bracelet. So let's get that on. All right, we've got loads of little pictures of the Virgin Mary and other religious icons on there. And you know what? Yeah, it, I really like the way it looks. Well, I used to really like the way these look, but the fact that every single person now wears these makes it so unindividual. It's like, you know, why wear a piece of jewelry everyone's wearing? It's not your choice, it's not your style. You've obviously copied it and you've copied it two years too late. So if you're still rocking these two, get rid of them. Jesus Peace Bracelet, Shambhala, gone, over, dead. Okay, and that brings me to our next piece of religious jewellery, which I used to like, but now is the epitome of not cool. Dun dun dun. The dreaded rosary bead. And for some of my, my past clients who I've hooked up with these, I forgive you. I mean, so forgive me even. I forgive you for wearing it, even though I gave you it. No, forgive me because... These used to be super cool, but now they're just so common. Everyone's wearing these, and they're just so obvious. There's no individuality there. Get rid of it. That's a rosary bead, and I still love the way the rosary bead looks. And maybe in five years' time, when everyone stops wearing it, this will come back massively. But right now, it's done. Everyone's got it. It's not cool. It's mass-produced. No individuality. Lose it. All right, so lose the rosary beads. And actually, if you check out one of our blogs... I think one of our last blogs we had was Women's Opinions on Fashion. One of the most beautiful girls I've ever seen directly said she doesn't like these. Right? And off camera, she said she used to like them, but now they're too common. So there it is. You know, From the horse's mouth. Well, not the horse, the attractive woman's mouth. There we go, no rosary beads. And that brings me to 
Our next bit of jewellery. Okay. This kind of thing here is possibly the worst. So we've got this kind of yin yang. It's really close to my neck. I'm going to make it even closer to show you how. It's really close to my neck. It's like a choker. It looks really feminine. It's got a peace sign on it. Like, dude, you're not a hippie. Like, why are you wearing a peace sign? You think a peace sign's cool? Whatever, man. The peace sign isn't actually bad, but on this lame ass, tight to the neck, band jewelry thing, it's terrible. I think this is absolutely terrible. It looks not cool, it's not current, it's not fashionable, it's the kind of thing you often see dudes wearing. Again, it's that kind of surfery look, really hates it. And especially when it's close to the neck like this. It looks like a choker, it looks feminine. So it'd be much better if it dangled down, but not feeling that either. And then, again, these are examples of stuff we already had, but let's have a look at a few high street things which really just do not work from the high street, yeah? So this one here was actually from River Island. This was from Top Man, and you're going to find similar bits all over the place. Every high street shop, and you're going to see badly dressed guys all over the world wearing them, right? We're in London now. Funny enough, I know that these are actually super cool, Well, they were this summer in Milan. I spent some time in Milan this summer, a fashion capital. Well, I think we're actually a bit more progressive in sort of street. When I say street, I mean what's going on right now for young people in cities throughout the world. London is very progressive in that sense, so we'd had these for a while. I think Milan was just catching up because they were super cool there, everyone was rocking them. And dude, I was just looking thinking, wow man, we did this a year ago in London, two years ago, three years ago. So, that was from River Island, lose them. River Island really had some terrible bracelets. These are the epitome of bad bracelets. I mean, look at the colours, oh god, five quid. Wow, you'd have to pay me five quid to even wear these on my foot. Yeah, right, so terrible. Look at that tacky ass pink thing. You know, you just look like a child who, who, whose mum bought him some friendship bracelets on the beach when they went on holiday. Not a good look. So if you've got anything like that, lose it. I hate as well when guys wear loads of friendship bracelets, old dirty friendship bracelets or old festival bracelets. You know, it's unhygienic for a start, especially festival bracelets. How many times have you been to the toilet wearing that festival bracelet? It doesn't come off. You know, it's just dirty, it's grubby. Yeah, I've been to a festival, I'm super cool. Well, you're not, dude. You're just wearing a grubby bracelet, which you've probably, you know, been to the toilet and cleaned yourself wearing that. Not attractive, not cool. The colours on this one, just say it, just, you know, say it all. They're tacky, they're not manly. It just looks like a child's bracelet or a 15 year old girl's, no actually 15 is too old, a 12 year old girl's bracelet. So if you're wearing stuff like that, lose it. Again, these are pretty bad. Just these kind of bead combinations. It looks really surfery. As I said, if you're a surfer and you're on Bondi Beach and you know you're catching waves and you're a bronzed god, cool, rock the surfer look. But when you're in cold old London, and the nearest place you're going to get to go surfing is a dip in the Thames, what do these say about you? Just that you wear crappy jewellery which belongs on a beach. So again, leave out the kind of friendship bracelet thing, these elasticated tacky beads. Finally, you know, more of these kind of cheap arsed friendship bracelet things. They look like they've been made, you know, they're just, they're just rubbish. So all these kind of cheap bracelets, just trying to pull off that kind of travelery, surfer, festival goer thing. Man, rock them in Thailand when you're traveling or on the beach if you're a surfer, but leave them out of the city and out of the places where you want like a city slicker and super cool. So no, no, no. And then, uh, I think that is nearly it actually, gents. So the last thing I was gonna comment on quickly, trouser chain. I like these. If you see right now, I have my wallet connected to one here, a small one. And again, don't like this big circle thing, but say that was connected to my wallet, that would look pretty cool as well. And actually, I really like the two together, so there we go, that was pretty cool to do. You can have just one or the two together. Trouser chain, really cool. We've got one classic link one and one like that. And there we go, another example of how you can make your own chain. So this chain here, that's fading. I could easily take that off my trouser chain, 
put on a medallion, like one of these, I could put this very ring on it and wear it around my neck. So that would be an easy way to create your own sort of necklace again, using a trouser chain. That's just how simple it is. So there we go, gents. That was a very long blog, and that was men's accessories.